Hello and welcome to the Diamond Select Toys and Gentle Giant Limited panel. I'm your host, DST Zach, aka MS Word, and I'm going to be walking you through all the various lines that are upcoming for DST and GGLTD. Later on, we'll be talking to DST President DST Chuck, and he'll answer all of your burning questions, but for now, let's get started. The Avatar The Last Airbender line of action figures continues with Series 4, Final Battle Aang and Sokka. Series 5, coming this winter, features Blue Spirit Zuko and Iroh. The Gallery Diorama line continues with Zuko arriving this fall. The Bruce Lee line of PVC dioramas continues with the third in the Element series, Earth, coming this fall. The Cobra Kai line of action figures, based on the Netflix series, will kick off with Series 1 arriving this winter. A preview box set available for San Diego features the three in diorama packaging. The Crow line of collectibles continues with a Gallery Diorama, a Legends in Three Dimensions half-scale bust, and a Premier Collection statue, all which will roll out beginning this fall. Available now is the San Diego exclusive Crow and Chair action figure. The G.I. Joe line of collectibles kicks off with the Destro PVC diorama this fall, followed by Snake Eyes this winter. A box set of G.I. Joe Mini Mates will feature four two-inch minifigures in a deluxe window box. And the first Legends in Three Dimensions half-scale bust for G.I. Joe will be Storm Shadow. Based on the hit Netflix series, two Invincible action figures of Invincible and Omni-Man will be available this fall. Invader Zim action figures will arrive this fall, followed by the Iron Giant uh, in his battle mode. The Lord of the Rings line of action figures continues with Series 3, Aragorn and the Moria Orc. These include the last pieces of the Build-A-Figure of Sauron. Series 4 will feature Gandalf and a uruk warrior. Following Series 4 will be the Deluxe Gollum action figure, which includes a rock formation, as well as three alternate heads and additional accessories, including Legolas's knives. The San Diego exclusive box set of Twilight Frodo and Gollum will include Gollum's raft, as well as an alternate head for Gollum. The Best of the Muppets continues with Series 3, starring the Electric Mayhem, arriving this summer. The San Diego exclusive box set features a battle-damaged Beaker and Bunsen. Nightmare Before Christmas Series 10 will arrive this summer as well, uh, featuring the Corpse Mom and Dad, Mr. Hyde, and Mrs. Claus. The long-awaited Creature Under the Stairs box set will arrive this summer as well, including the Cyclops. The Making Christmas box set features Jack Skellington and the Hanging Tree and is a San Diego exclusive. Sonic the Hedgehog returns with a new gallery diorama uh, based on the movie appearance and will arrive this winter. DST celebrates its return to the Transformers license with a box set of Minimates uh, available this fall. This year's Tron San Diego exclusive packages together three blister carded action figures in retro translucent colors uh, and will be available this fall. On the Marvel side, the Marvel Select line of action figures continues with a TV based version of Wanda from Maximoff from WandaVision. There will also be re releases of The Watcher and Venom. As it approaches its 20th anniversary, the Marvel Minimates line continues with Series 81 featuring the characters from the Dark Phoenix Saga. A San Diego exclusive box set will recreate the scene from the first Avengers movie, featuring all six Avengers. The Marvel Gallery line of PVC dioramas kicks off a new sub-series this summer with battle-inspired dioramas starring Captain America, Wolverine, Dark Phoenix, Vision, Wasp, Iron Man, Thor, and Spider-Man. Display them together to form a larger battle scene. A new gallery diorama of Miles Morales is based on his video game appearance and will appear this winter. A 1 7th scale mini bust of Deadpool will arrive this summer, followed by Captain America in the fall, and Miles Morales will get a half scale bust based on his video game appearance this fall. The Marvel Premier Collection statue line continues with Rhino, Lizard, Black Widow, The Thing, Colossus, Bullseye, and Cyclops. These 1 7 scale statues will begin rolling out this summer through the fall and winter. The animated line of mini busts, based on X Men the Animated Series and Spider Man the Animated Series, continues with Gam Gambit this summer, Sabretooth in the fall, followed by Mysterio and Dr. Octopus. A 1 6 scale bust of Venom will join Carnage this fall, and Miles Morales will get a half clear camouflage variant for San Diego this summer. Based on the Marvel cover artwork of Scotty Young, statues of Gamora, Apocalypse, Nightcrawler, and the San Diego exclusive White Doctor Doom will arrive starting this summer. 
In the galaxy of Star Wars, the one-sixth scale line of minibus continues, with Captain Rex coming out this summer, followed by the fall releases of Darth Vader, Emperor Palpatine, and the Death Trooper. Uh, winter will also bring Count Dooku, and this summer's San Diego exclusive is Concept Darth Maul. The one-sixth scale milestone statue line continues with Grogu in Pram, Princess Leia with her website exclusive mouse droid, Boba Fett, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Jedi Luke Skywalker. They will all begin arriving this summer. The one-seventh scale line of animated style resin busts continues with Grand Admiral Thrawn, Darth Maul from Rebels, and Wrecker in both unmasked and website exclusive masked variants. The Legends in 3D line of one-half scale busts uh, continues with Ahsoka Tano, the TIE Fighter pilot, Boba Fett, a First Order Trooper, and the San Diego exclusive Light Up Hologram Mandalorian. And last but not least, the Jumbo action figure line continues with 12-inch versions of classically styled Star Wars action figures, including the concept Darth Vader arriving this winter, and glossy versions of Darth Vader and Boba Fett from Empire Strikes Back. I'm here with Chuck Tercera, president of Diamond Select Toys and Gentle Giant Limited, and we're going to talk about what's coming up uh, on the line plan for DST and GGLTD. So, Chuck, it's been two years without an SDCC in person. What do you miss most about it? Uh, I miss the interaction with the fans, for sure. I have that chair that I try to sit in on the corner of the showcase where new stuff is, and I'm always there for anyone who has questions that they might not want to ask online or whatever. And and even if it's not a regular fan, I like sitting there watching kids and collectors come by that have never seen our stuff and point to it and say that's cool or whatever. And and for people who aren't don't know who I am, it's a great chance to get unfiltered criticism or or um, see them enjoy the stuff. So I like seeing my friends and stuff, but I think I, I miss most sitting in that corner chair, listening to feedback from fans and, and non you know regular DSD fans like the general public fans. I definitely miss that. Uh, we actually have some really great San Diego San Diego exclusives this year, including Tron, uh, Lord of the Rings, um, a lot of stuff. Do you have a favorite? I think what I've liked most overall is messing with the packaging. Like I, I think the product's great, but what we've been trying to do the last few years is make packaging that is part of the experience. You know, for people spending that kind of money, and especially in a, a post-pandemic environment, I think it's more about the experience. So it's been really fun designing the packaging with Robert and the and the team. Uh, I like Cobra Kai. I, I think it's a fun license to have. I've enjoyed the show when it was just on YouTube. So being part of that is fun. And, um, you know, I like Tron when the movie came out, you know, like a lot of the kids my age would did. But I think Cobra Kai, because it's got the neatest package, it's a really fun, trendy show that I enjoy watching myself and I'm looking forward to. So I think that's the one I like the most. The Crow's cool, too, because I remember that. I went to the premiere of that in Boston and James Olbar. Uh, spoke at the premiere and it was the touching moment because Brandon had just died a little before that. So that brings back memory for me too. So I like them all. <laughs> uh, fans really enjoyed the VHS packaging Tron figure we did last year. Uh, we don't have one this year, but will we see more of those VHS figures in the future? Definitely. We we had some plan and, and we're going to keep doing something like that. A more current movie won't lend itself to an actual VHS. So what we'll do is create a VHS simulated packaging. We have a national retail that's engaged now in discussions to make that uh, part of an ongoing line with them. So if we don't have it as specials, we'll, it'll be available at that retailer, hopefully. And that'll start early fall, I think. Okay. Uh, the Lord of the Rings, we have a great exclusive this year with uh, Frodo and Gollum. Um, what's coming up next from that license? We had talked about um, doing some larger scale figure more larger scale figures will it be more builder figures i don't know we've got to talk to warner brothers and see what's going on with the amazon show the line's doing very well which we kind of figured slash hoped it would uh we didn't want to do a build a figure that would take fans forever to make like the ghostbuster one and that was kind of unavoidable because of the sheer size of it but if we did get anything negative feedback, it was like, guys, that's a lot of figures to buy. I mean, there's no way around it. But so with Lord of the Rings, we tried to do something a little more concise. And then Series 4 has a couple expensive figures on their own. So we spent the money on the figures, right? 
So if the line continues past then, and we should know by the time you're watching this, we'll discuss whether we do a build an environment or a build a figure or um, maybe don't and just throw a lot more accessories in it. We've had some fans uh, asking about more accessories. So series five will be like the next incarnation of that line. Okay. Um, Avatar The Last Airbender is another line that fans have really gotten behind. Um, where do you see that line going? We have, of the planned figures, one more to go. Uh, again, probably be announced or close to by the time you watch this. Um, or Zach will want to announce it during the San Diego Comic-Con virtual event. But again, we'll probably see where that goes. The line's doing well. Um, the show obviously got a big boost when it went on Netflix. So um, we would, we're definitely working on more other products like statues and gallery and stuff like that are in the works for sure. Figures we'll, um, we'll probably discuss shortly with the team and see where we want to go after that. But we definitely have some more statues and a gallery piece. And I think I saw something else cross my desk. So we're not definitely not done with Avatar. We've just renewed our arrangement with Nickelodeon. So we'll keep going. Great. Uh, we have a couple of anniversaries coming up this year. One of them is the 20th anniversary of Mini Mates. Um, what can we expect from the line going forward? I believe at this point we've shipped Series 80, right? Yes. And we've solicited Series 81. Is that mm -hmm. as of yes. this? I get confused sometimes with what you guys are saying and what I know. But um, we just this week had some exciting discussions about possibility of doing something online uh, through our new revised website which now is accepting pre-orders um, as of the end of June. So we've had some discussion about that. The costing and um, materials and everything you've probably read about with COVID is really impacting a line that's a low retail point, point like a mini mate, right? So I'm sure you all have heard about the raw materials and labor and all that stuff going up and post COVID. So um, we're looking to maybe, maybe lean more into box sets, you know, that kind of stuff. So, uh, definitely not abandoning Mini-Mates. It's a, a key line of the company. Like you said, it's a big anniversary coming up. Uh, but we just got to figure out where that exists in the current environment we're in. But definitely not abandoning Mini-Mates or Marvel Mini-Mates at all. Excellent. Uh, Marvel Select is also celebrating their 20th anniversary next year. Um, do you have any uh, fun plans that you're thinking about to celebrate? Mm -hmm. Sad to say, I've not thought about it. Usually I rely on you for that. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I know you've been bugging me to do a fan poll, so maybe we'll do some sort of fan poll. Um, it's, it, the main, Marvel Select Line is a very hard line to line plan because there's so much Marvel content now. Between the Disney Plus shows and all the movies that are backed up and the great stuff they're doing comics. It's, and then the reruns. People like, can you get me more Venoms? Can you get me more Carnage or um, Watcher we just brought back, which had tremendous success. The new Hulk figure. We've already had to rerun that. So that's a tricky line to plan. Um, oh, maybe I'll talk to you about doing some sort of fan poll, like pick from these five characters or something. But uh, yeah, it's fun to line plan, but it, I dread it too at the same time because just so much great stuff to pick from at Marvel right now. And Marvel's like that so many um, defined fan groups, like the people who want the 616 or the people who want X-Men. Like I'll do three X-Men in a row and we'll get asked the questions or you do more X-Men. You know, or I love Spider-Man. Like, why do you do more Spider-Man villains? It's like, well, X-Men, 616, Spider-Man, movie, TV, you know, it's, I don't know. I, I I think we could probably maybe do one of each and that would be the year, right? So yeah. I think I think I've been thinking about, I know you've been pushing me to maybe do some sort of even limited fan poll. We've had some pretty good success with that with Star Wars for Premiere Guild. So maybe we'll tie some sort of fan vote into the new website now that we have those capabilities. Great. Open to suggestions. Ask DST. Excellent. Yes. If you have any questions that you want to ask after this, please uh, write into Ask DST on the DiamondSelectToys.com site. Shameless plug. <laughs> no shame. No shame. Okay. Uh, lately, we've had more products appearing at Walmart, including the gallery dioramas and the bus. Will that partnership continue? Well, that's entirely up to Walmart and the fans. It's something we like. Uh, by putting in that what they call the collector section, off the main boys aisle, it does allow them to have a more diverse product mix than they would in the main aisle, where you see a lot of the traditional toys, like they have the big Barbie zone or um, Target has the American Girl doll type zone. 
So by putting in that back section, I think it's where like DVDs and stuff like that used to be. It does allow Walmart to have um, tighter buying decisions where they're not buying 16, 18 months ahead, which is hard for a company like ours. And they'll take a movie like A Crow in or a, like you said, a gallery piece that's like $50 retail or a bust. So it is di- allowing a more diverse uh, and more diverse price list item in a Walmart. And our sales guys have done a good partnership there. So uh, it's a balance. We want to make sure they get stuff that's not um, – Eliminate the need to go to a specialty store that supports us all the time, but also helps a company like ours grow dramatically, introducing our products to a, a different group, right? So that really helps a company our size. When I'm at Comic-Con, one of the things I mentioned is you'll see a lot of people walk by and they don't even know that stuff existed, right? They're like, oh my God, that's cool. That's cool. And those are people who paid to go to a Comic-Con, right? So there's a whole layer of people out there that like this stuff that don't know we exist, don't know it exists. So Walmart's important for that kind of stuff. You know, it's a great birthday present item. You know, some kid gets some mini mates or a gallery for a birthday present they they learn about collecting and they buy more so we really hope that'll continue um i know sales guys have had discussions we propose some stuff they've asked for some stuff so probably by the time you see this we'll know what uh 2022 holds for that retailer excellent uh, over on the Gentle Giant Limited side of things, uh, fans have been excited to see a resurgence in the number of Star Wars jumbo figures being offered um do you see us maintaining that uh, output in that line uh, I don't know what context of time you're referring to, so I don't know if that content, you know what I mean? Um, but yes, we, we had some issues with the factory that John Giant LTD had been using. We had some tooling issues, so we begged fans' patience. In the meantime, worked on that Lando piece for the Premier Guild. And now uh, Dev Gilmore from John Giant LTD before, he runs point on that line, and he's got a pretty good rollout. Uh, um, I don't want to say ambitious, but yeah, I think as long as the fan support is there for the renewed line, you know, you'll see more of it. But the concept Vader met with tremendous response. Like, absolutely, if that response continues for that concept line, then I think you're looking at a couple of years with the solid content coming out consistently. It really jump started the interest. At the end, um, the LTD when when 3D systems were running, let's say it that way, right? When they're running it the demand had really cratered for the jumbos. Um, and the Lando did not do that great as a premier good done. But as we've shown fans is more coming and we've done a couple limited variants and that stuff, the, the demand is starting to build. And the Vader was definitely a, an eye opener for, for everyone that, you know, the potential is still there. So yeah, I don't know when you say that amount of content, I don't know, but you'll see uh, a fair number of releases per year. It won't be as many as we do on like the mini bust, right? But I would say three or four new sculpt releases a year. And then we'd like to do several show exclusives. They're a little tricky to do show exclusives because they're so big. It's hard to ship in. 500 of those, I know. So if you've ever seen our booth, it's big but small, right? And we just don't know if we'd have room for 500 jumbo figures in that booth. But I think you'll see th- uh, four releases, three or four releases, give or take, plus some exclusives and online stuff, Yeah, which I hope you know, is engaging for fans. Great. Um, this year's Premier Guild fan poll had some great prequel trilogy options. Uh, is it difficult to balance between the three trilogies when planning Star Wars products? Yeah, I would say as hard as Marvel Select is to plan, Star Wars is harder on um, bus because we didn't control that first 20 years, right? So there's a diverse need for fans to do uh, what Blink of an Eye characters, right, from Jabba, Skiff, or from the Cantina, or the different movies, you know, sequel, original, prequel, uh, what are they called, the Disney ones, the 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 non, well, the canon, you know, like the pre-prequels, right, the, mm-hmm. the like, Han Solo movie. So there's that, and then there's fans who are like, oh, John Giant did this character, but not this character for the group, so you have to judge the desire for them to be complete versus the financial feasibility of of that piece uh with the poll we try to specifically do something from everything so you'll see the prequel trilogy is the genosian you'll see the um original trilogy i think we've got the yeah, skiff guard yeah. yeah um and then the um sequel trilogy is the droid from naz's cantina uh and then what was the, the fourth Oh, um, of course, no gun ray from, yeah. So we tried to cover, you know, 
all of them, right? As best we could so fans could decide with their vote. And it's only open to Premier Guild existing members. That way you don't gain ballot stuffing or, you know, um, online petitioning for votes. But, oh, yeah, planning the, the Star Wars bus line especially is very difficult because you'll come up with something cool and you get on that trail. And they're like, oh, my gosh, um, you know, eight months in, I haven't done a, a original trilogy character, right, because you're on the Clone Wars track. You know, so it, it's very hard to try to bring in elements so we also have statues and other stuff where we can bring in those other properties to try to keep those fans engaged as best we can. But um, it's hard. And then you get your personal taste, right? Like I'm getting my first shot at Star Wars high-end 3D collectibles in 20 years. Or if you go back to when I was a kid, you know, since I was eight years old, right? So I've got stuff that I want to do. And I'm proposing it to Dev. And he's like, I don't know if that's that's going to sell. But yeah, but I wanted to do that. <laughs> you know, so the Luke Dreamer was one. I was like, I got to do well, there's been a lot of Luke's on tattooing. I'm like, yeah, but this is, you know, this is what I want to do, you know, because that when you're a kid, the things that impacted you were the lightsaber or seeing Darth Vader walk through that corridor. You know, imagine being eight years old and not knowing what you're going to see because there's no internet back then, right? My dad just took me to the movie and you're like, well, you know, it just hit you right at, at once. There was no spoilers or anything. You knew the hype, but you didn't know what you were going to see. You'd have to watch Entertainment Tonight to like see little clips of a trailer that they would tease you along. So, yeah, you've got – and, you know, a lot of people that are younger, obviously, than me, which is a lot of people, they like those prequel trilogies, right? Because that was their Star Wars. You know, dads took their kids like I got taken to mine. So – and they're aging up, you know. They're at an age where now they can buy stuff. So, you know, I'm tunnel vision for original trilogy, right, because that's what I grew up with. And then these younger people that are just as valid feelings as ours want to do prequel trilogy stuff. You know, they feel like we're neglecting them. So – yeah, and I don't want to do more than three or four Star Wars projects a month. That's just something we want to be very aware of and not burden people's, um, you know, finances, right? So we try to do, I don't know if you've noticed, we try to do like three a month, plus the online stuff and, you know, maybe a jumbo here and there. So, yeah, it's like impossible. And then now you've got all this new great content. Mandalorian, Mandalorian Season 2, Mandalorian Season 3, Book of Boba Fett, Obi-Wan, uh, Bad Batch, you had Clone Wars Season 7 last year, which was just, the last arc was particularly amazing. So, yeah, there's no way, Zach, to do everything that everyone wants, right? Mm -hmm. And I could. I could just spew it out, but it wouldn't be the quality they want, and it wouldn't be there to the checkbooks. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Star Wars, is a, it's a tricky legacy to help manage. And I'm lucky we've got a lot of people that were there at Channel Giant, Gabe Garcia and Dev, and we've got Adam still painting a lot of the stuff. We've got Anissa um, sculpting. So we've got a lot of people that we're able to bring in that, that can help me along the way. And, of course, everyone at DST is a fan. Like you are, like Robert is, like Barry is a huge fan, you know. So I'm getting a lot of input from a lot of people, not just online. That was rambling. Did that help, or did I go off tangent again? No, it was great. Thank you. <laughs> okay. um, this may be a um, similar technical question. Um, Currently, we currently have ongoing um, one six scale statues and one seven scale statues. Um, how do you determine uh, what uh, what is going into one scale versus what's going into another scale? Uh, well, Gen Giant had a resin line called the Gallery, which was very confusing for our fans because we'd already created the Gallery PVC line. I don't know why Gen Giant started their one seventh line, but what we're doing is the one six are going to be like what we did for one six milestone pieces. Bigger pieces, bigger bases, um, key moments, you know, because if you're going to spend 200 250 upwards of $500 on a piece, it's got to be, we feel something that resonates emotionally with you, right? It's got, you're not buying 12 of those a year, right? So it's got to be something that has gravitas behind it, like the like the Darth Vader piece we did, we feel, for the 35th anniversary. That's the moment. Great movie, but that's the one that really blew everyone's mind. Like, as again, without the internet as a kid, you were maybe skipping through the novelization or something that would come out like a little bit before through Scholastic, you know, your school. So uh, we take a lot of thought before we make something a one six piece. So it's not going to be like a one six maquette. It's going to be more like what DSD does. It'll be a bigger piece. It'll be specific to a moment or evoke a moment. And the one seventh is where we can do more. We can build groups with it even. You know, you could say all the Jedi from the, sequ the prequel trilogy. You know, not the an army build a hundred fifty item, but you know we had the Ray Dreamer and the Luke Dreamer. You know, we would be hesitant to do a five hundred statue that you had to buy two or three of, right? So yeah. uh, 
definitely the name kind of tells you what our thinking is milestone right it's got to be a milestone moment a very important moment in that movie or 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 evoke that feeling if it's not exactly from the screen you know it's got to evoke that moment so you'll see more one seven pieces by virtue of the low price point than you will of the one sixth in the line we would never do eight to twelve like we do one one seven more maybe like four you know, like the um, the Luke Skywalker we just put out, right? That's uh, mm-hmm. that's that was, you know, Luke after he started to learn Jedi powers, and um, Empire and Jedi was a really cool character, you know. So that piece evokes that black look, that feeling that oh something's going on here, you know. He ends his job as pilot, so you're like, this is not the kid who was whining about going to Tachi Station anymore. So that that's the kind of thing you'll generally see a larger base with it too. Okay. Or I just use a dartboard when I'm. <laughs> I'm sure some fans think that's how we do it. Well, that's great stuff. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. I really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we'll be seeing you in person next year, at next year's show. We'll see everyone there, hopefully. Excellent. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Zach. And that's our show. Thank you for coming by and listening. Uh, You can stop by DiamondSelectToys.com and GentleGiantLimited.com to find out what's new and upcoming for your favorite lines. And look for us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Have a good one. We'll see you at the next show. Show.